It's going to take some real dedication to be able to kill this enemy Ardeo, uh, but it should be able to be done. Unless we get ganked by a couple people, we're going to have to use our Aegis here. Uh, we'll use our two and we'll be able to pick up the Ardeo. Our one will kill the solo laner. A couple auto attacks should finish off the mid laner as well. Very nice. They all grouped up and that's what I was telling you guys earlier. The powerful, how powerful the one is when they get grouped up. I'm going to teleport into this hello hope you're doing well today i'm really excited to bring you guys some good old silly gameplay uh now by popular request i will put the build at the very start of this video uh so you guys can get the full build without actually watching through the whole the whole thing uh but yeah i do believe Scylla is probably one of the most effective and easy to play mages in the mid lane currently uh she has a bit of a lacking early game because her clear isn't the very best but once you can get past that uh, early obstacle i think that this character brings a lot of value in the late game uh you know decent cc very high damage and very very safe uh so in this video as always we're going to go over the abilities uh as well as the you know just some general tips and tricks and then we'll finish it off with the build that i went in this video and some, some substitution items if uh, you're in a different kind of situation than the one that I was in in this video. Uh, because as always, one build isn't always going to be the best. You're always going to basically want to maximize your utility in a game because not every situation is the same. Different situations call for different builds. Uh, we should be able to kill him. I don't know why he's blinking in like that. Um, I think he blinked at least. I don't know how he covered that amount of distance that fast, but we were able to kill him for it. Uh, starting off with Silva's passive, uh, quick learner. This passive is very, very simple. Whenever you rank an ability all the way up to rank five, can we kill this guy? It's gonna take a couple more autos. Nice job. Uh, whenever you rank up an ability to level five, as uh, to rank five, uh, you're actually going to get 25 magical power for each ability. Uh, truly, this is a very powerful ability. Um, or sorry, passive, getting your levels past level, uh, you know, rank five or two rank five is very important on this character as soon as possible because 25 power is not a small amount. Uh, once you have all of your abilities past, um, you know, rank five at a certain point, you're getting enough damage to be comparable to a, a solid mage item. Uh, if only with having four abilities rank five, you're basically getting a full item, a 100 damage item. Uh, having all five for the 125, that's more than most, uh, you know, mid-range mage items will give you. Very, very nice passive, quite a lot of power. Uh, so what this means is that you might want to uh, kind of maybe skip leveling the ultimate, at least so you level your two and your one. Uh, that's usually what I do on this character, because not only do you get this extra power from leveling your abilities to rank 5, but you also get secondary effects to these abilities. Now, moving on to Scylla's first ability, this is a line attack. Um, it stops on any enemy or god hit. Uh, this includes minions, this includes, uh, you know, jungle camps, anything of that nature. And what it does is it stops on that enemy hit and it roots them, you saw me use it there. Uh, it'll do damage and root them, that is it. Uh, the more you level it, the more damage you will get, and the higher the root duration, the longer the du root duration. I can't talk today, I'm sorry, it's a bit late. Um, so with that being said, uh, the cool thing is when you level this to rank 5, uh, usually it would just root one person. Now, if you hit someone, it will root the two targets around them, closest to them, uh, within a certain small distance. So if you were to have a team grouped up pretty, you know, close together, you're going to be able to root three people and do some pretty heavy damage to three people, which is very, very important. Uh, I would imagine, or I like to say, that when you rank this ability to rank five and you get that uh, AOE root and damage as opposed to single target, that is when Scylla gets online, that is when Scylla can start rotating, and that is when Scylla can start destroying, in my opinion. Moving on to the second ability, Crush. This is going to be the ability that you level first. It's going to be your main source of damage. It's going to be your your main source of poke. Basically, all of the above. Also, I can't believe I died. I didn't know that I was taking the tick damage. Uh, this is going to be a circular ability that you place at a target location. Uh, you can place it and it's going to stay there and just kind of do nothing for uh, a bit until you decide to explode it. You can decide at any time when to actually set this ability off. 
uh, as we're able to kill the enemy guardian and then also the hunter uh, so let's go ahead and pick up the gold fury here very nice it should be pretty free considering two people are dead if someone shows up then we'll just kill that one person and then pick up the gold fury once again uh, but like i mentioned very very uh cool ability because you get to choose when it goes off you can see here i'm choosing to keep it on the ground and then exploding it only when uh, i want to secure the gold fury with it as we're able to clear uh the loki as well uh, and this ability does quite a lot of damage and scales pretty heavily as well. Uh, so when you rank this up to 5, you're actually going to get a, um, what's the word, protection reduction. So this ability is going to actually reduce the protections on the enemy gods. And then also, if I forgot to mention, this does slow as well. Uh, so with that out of the way, let's go on to the third ability. Third ability is very simple. This is going to be your form of escape slash your form of initiation if you want to use it as such uh so what it does and you saw me use it there is you get to place a sentinel little dog thingy you know one of your little pets at a target location and then whenever you press the ability again you actually get to teleport to that location uh, the cool thing about this ability is that it gives you passive mp5 uh, but also that it gives you vision the more you level it the longer the bigger the range uh, so when you actually level this ability, you're going to get a couple of things. One, you're going to actually get more uh, range from this. So you can summon it further away from you, meaning you can cover a larger distance. And then second of all, the vision, the ward aspect of this ability is actually going to increase in diameter as well. So you're going to be able to get more vision out of this ability as well. Uh, very, very cool. Moving on to the ultimate. This is probably the coolest uh, thing about this character's kit as we're able to kill the mid laner. Uh, put simply, you're going to enter this form of being a monster. It literally says I'm a monster and it's called I'm a monster. Uh, so what it does is you're going to become CC immune and you're going to be able to kind of instruct one of your dogs to bite down at a target location, dealing massive damage. It's a circle area. Uh, and when I say massive damage, I mean one shot massive damage. Uh, and you're going to also gain, like I mentioned, CC and movement speed for the whole duration of this ability. Uh, after you hit someone, the cool thing is if you kill that person with this ability, you can use it again. And you can truly kill five people with it. If you kill one person, then you'll be able to use it again. And you'll be able to continue to use it up until you no longer kill someone with it. Uh, only then will you exit the state of being in the ultimate. Which is very, very cool. Uh, there is a duration which you can spend in this ultimate it is an infinite but as long as you keep killing people with it you're going to be able to continue to stay uh, in this ultimate form and continue to be able to you know watch out people you see me using it here pretty big damage uh, so with the abilities out of the way uh, like i mentioned this character isn't the strongest in the early game because her clear isn't the best uh, but overall in the late game she's very very powerful because she has a decent escape especially with it uh, leveled up all the way uh, she has decent cc with a slow and a root uh, which is more than most mages can ask for and she does an insane amount of damage late game she always has the threat of just completely one-shotting someone uh, so with that i usually don't put any levels into the ultimate until i have my one and my two completely leveled the two for the extra damage and help with clear and then also the 25 power that you gain once you level it to rank five and then the one is very very important not only do i level it for the damage this does eventually start doing quite a lot of damage it also increases the root duration it gives me 25 extra power uh, once i get it to rank five but then also i get the the ability to root more than one person and damage more than one person which is invaluable only after these two abilities are both maxed up, that's when I start leveling the ultimate. And the truth of the matter is, the ultimate does a lot of damage base and, um, you know, what's the word? Scaling, so you're not really missing out. You're missing out on damage, don't get me wrong, by not leveling it. Uh, but the truth of the matter is that this ab ability does a lot of damage to begin with. Uh, and I think you stand to gain more from leveling your 1 and your 2 all the way than you really do by actually leveling the ult. And we're able to kill this enemy mid laner. Uh, so yeah, that's the one tip that I have for you guys, especially with the way that this character's passive works, you're going to want to choose to not level your ultimate for the first couple of levels, and then start leveling it after your 1 and 2 have been leveled all the way. 
So with that being said, uh, at this time, I'd like to go ahead and let you guys know that I do have a Discord server. If you want to play or chat with me, that would be the way to do so. Click that link down in the description, or if you just need people to play Smite with, we have a lot of people in the Discord server now. Join in, find out about the events we're having, or just straight up find people to play with. We have a lot of people that are down to play. Uh, apart from that, I do stream on Twitch on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. So if you want to watch me play live, uh, it's very, it's a very different experience in my YouTube videos when you get to kind of hear me self monologue and kind of go over what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, how it's beneficial to our team. And it's just kind of a bit of a different way to learn uh, if you watch me live. So if you want to do so, also follow me on Twitch. All right, with that out of the way, we have a limited time to go over the build. You guys saw the build at the start of the match. Starting off, Conduit Gem is an option. Again, this character has very lackluster clear in the early game. Conduit Gem allows her to clear a bit better, but at the same time, Sands of Time is just broken. Sands of Time gives you 20 cooldown reduction and 190 power. Usually, if you were to want to buy a heavy cooldown reduction item, you're going to sacrifice in other stats, and it's going to be a bit of a luxury stat. It means you're going to get that stat and not very impressive other stats. But this item is an exception. It's your starter item, it's going to give you that 20 cooldown reduction once you upgrade it. But then furthermore, it's going to give you 190 power, which is the highest power uh, item in the game. There is no other item that will give you this much power. The only thing that comes close is Book of Thoth, and even then, it's not that close anymore after the nurse. Uh, this is the reason why I would go this item. Very, very powerful. Moving on to the second ability, I really like buying full cooldown, re cooldown reduction on Scylla. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and pick up the Spear of Desolation. Spear of Desolation does a couple of things. One, it gives me a decent, decent amount of power. Two, it gives me some cooldown reduction to help me get to that goal of having as much cooldown reduction as possible. But then also thirdly, it gives me pr uh, flat penetration. Flat penetration is important in the early game because the person that you're going up against or anyone that you would ever be going up against being the mid laner, the assassin, and the ADC ADC being your optimal gank in the uh, mid to early, uh, you know, early to mid game, you're going to want this flat penetration because in the early game, these characters don't, don't have that many protections. Uh, put simply, uh, percent penetration is kind of useless in the early game because people don't have enough protections to make it worth it. But in the early game, specifically with these squishier characters, uh, having one or preferably two flat penetration items in the early game allows you to do an immense amount of damage and basically get rid of all of their base protections and at that point you're doing true damage which is something that the enemy team has to watch out for uh, with you doing that amount of damage in the early to mid game. Uh, so in that spirit I also went for the Divine Ruin. Divine Ruin does a couple of things. It gives me power, it gives me some more flat penetration which I was talking about early, uh, earlier, uh, just a couple of seconds ago literally. Now, uh, these two items put together allow me to do this true damage for literally the entire mid to late, uh, or sorry, early to mid game, and then also maybe even late game depending on the carrier, uh, on the character, sorry. Uh, so with that being said, we also get some anti-heal from this item, which we're going to need because if we look at the enemy comp, our mid laner heals, our support heals, our solo laner is going to heal in one way or another. And our ADC not only has lifesteal from his kit, but also he is building into some form of lifesteal. So most of the enemy characters heal one way or another, uh, including the enemy... Excuse me, I had to yawn, like I said, it's a bit late. In including the enemy uh, support, who not only heals herself, but also the uh, team. So we want to be able to mitigate that healing just a bit. Uh, as I'm able to hit the ultimate over the wall and do an immense amount of damage. Moving on after that, this is not something that you see on a lot of mages, but the mages that can really make it work really do do well with them, and Scylla is one of these characters. Uh, Polynomicon is very strong on Scylla. The reasoning behind this is that doing her entire combo, it's going to look something like this. One auto attack to auto attack, or one auto attack ultimate if you want to just go for the complete one shot. Uh, the cool thing about this is we're able to actually kill them all here. Uh, the cool thing about this is that, again, it works so beautifully with her kit that having this extra burst damage from Polynomicon is going to basically get you the win a lot of the times in the 1v1. It's going to basically assist with completely one-shotting someone before they're able to actually make any action. Uh, now, what does Polynomicon do? For those of you that don't know, 
Polynomicon makes it so that after casting an ability, your next basic attack will do bonus damage according to a percentage amount of the power that you have. Considering how much power you have with this build, this ends up being quite a decent amount of damage. I'm talking about 600, 700 damage auto attacks after using an ability in the mid, you know, mid late game, kind of the very start of the late game. Anything past this, the late game when we're going into 30, 40 minutes, this is going to start doing like a thousand damage, which is basically translating to a whole extra ability uh, that you're hitting them with, and it one shots completely. It is devastating to get hit by this uh, so very very cool part of this character's build uh, after that i want to be able to deal with some of these tankier characters uh, however usually i wouldn't recommend going two items but specifically in this game they have three tanks they have the solo laner they have the so uh, support player and then the mid laner uh, Zhang Kui is actually pretty tanky, gaining quite a bit of protections. So I wanted to spend two item slots kind of trying to counter these to somewhat tankier characters. Uh, and I did this uh, through, again, first off, Soul Reaver. And then second off, uh, I decided to go into uh, Obsidian Shard. Soul Reaver helps me with the healthier targets. The more health they have, the more bonus damage you will do. Uh, and then Obsidian Shard gives me some percent penetration to help deal with some of their heavy protections. Uh, the cool thing about Soul Reaver specifically is that because you have a decent amount of cooldown reduction with this build, you can constantly apply this extra bonus damage based on how much health they have. Uh, so I hope you guys learned something from this video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos like these. And then as always, my Discord is down in the description if you need people to play Smite with or if you just want to chat with me. And then also my Twitch, if you want to join in and watch live, then you can do so with that link as well. Uh, anyways, without further ado, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you found it helpful. Uh, and with that out of the way, I love you guys and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.